Welcome back guys. For this tutorial, I wanted to show you how I made this simple auto material. This is using a world align blend node, meaning it will automatically blend between two materials based on your world's Z axis, axis and not your individual UV mapping. This is really useful for creating natural looking objects such as objects with like sand, moss, dirt, so we will take a second and set up a masked material that you can easily use and adjust for various objects. To begin, I got the original idea on ArtStation. I was looking at the work of Stuart Niblock. He's an advanced, or, I'm sorry, he's an advanced artist working on Mortal Kombat 1 in the environment department. And I really love the way these looked. So that's what I try to recreate right now. Well, without further ado, let's get started. Now, let's start by creating a new material and naming it. I name mine something like Tutorial Auto Material Masters or Master. Then we are going to need a model for our base object and a surface to blend on top of it. I'm not going to waste you guys' time watching me pick items from Mega Scans. So you guys just jump over to Mega Scans and find something you like. Once you get what you need, we can go into our Mega Scans folder and start dragging our textures over. We really need just the the base color and the normal maps for this. Side note, I also dragged my rock over into the scene so we can see what we were working on. It's a little small right now, so I increased the size by 10 times. Now we can grab the rock material and bring it into the bring it in. This next step is very important. We need to convert all our textures into parameters and label them accordingly. This way, when we have our material instance, we will have parameters that can be adjusted later. And we can even like change and swap them out to create new surfaces. I have my base material on the bottom and the blend or the moss material on top. Next, we need to grab our world aligned blend node which is basically what will be driving this material. It will compare the surfaces against the world's Z vector, meaning it will add our blend material to the top of the surfaces. We want to create two scalar parameters. I'm going to label the first one blend sharpness, which will control the amount of the blend, and the second one blend bias, which will act as a fall off. You can now connect them and give them default values. I chose a value of 10 and 0.5, Though we will, we will be fully adjusting these later. Now let's grab a lerp node and start plugging them in. The base material diffuse texture will be plugged in the bottom, and the blend material diffuse texture will be added to the top. Then we need to grab the alpha from the world aligned blend and plug it into the lerp node, and then we could, we could I'm sorry, and then we connect the lerp node to the base color slot. Of our main material. Now it's time to start working on the normal maps. We will start by grabbing a blend angle corrected normals so we can first blend the two normal maps together. This way both sides of our object will get the proper normal map. If we don't do this step there's a chance our model won't look right and you'll be able to see whenever it goes the top part of the model won't have a the rock won't have the rocks normal map and that's not what we want. Then we grab a second lerp node we can't grab the alpha from the world aligned blend for normals. That doesn't work. We have to grab the explicit normals and plug it into the lerp alpha. Then take the results and plug that into the A slot of the second lerp node. And also grab our rock normal map a second time and we plug that into the B slot of our second lerp node. Then I'm going to take a second and make our graph a little cleaner. Then we connect the output of the lerp node into the normal slot. We can then apply the material to see how it looks and see if it's working. Right now it doesn't seem to be working. I made a rookie mistake, so let me fix it real quick. I actually had the blend material and the base materials backwards, so I just swapped them real quick. Now we are going to create a third lerp, lerp node, this time for the roughness, roughness and metallic. Now let's create a third lerp node this time for the roughness and metallic, so we can control how wet and reflective the material will look. I'm going to clean this up, clean this up a little bit and move this back to make space. 
Always keeping your material graph clean is a good practice. Now we need to create two more scalar parameters. I know this seems like a lot of parameters, but it really helps in the final material. Make one for the, for the rock material roughness and one for the moss material roughness. Remember to plug in the alpha and we can connect this to the roughness map and later the metallic map. If you really want, you can create separate values for the roughness and metallic the same way. But combining them like this works for my use. Feel free to split them up if you want in your version. But as you can see, the material is working like we intended. But let's close all this out and create a material instance so we can really see the versatility. Let's open it up and first check on all our parameters that we had set up. And you can see as I play with them, adjust, I can adjust how wet the rock, the rock looks and the amount of the blend and fall off. I can even swap the blend material to create new surfaces. That's all. See you guys next time.